Accuracy. It is one of the most important values for any vehicle to have in the game. Being able to hit your shots, especially at distance, can make the difference between winning and losing battles. The major strengths of accuracy is A, if you're shooting at hatches or weak points, you have a much higher chance of hitting them. But the other big advantage of accuracy is that you can stay further back, shoot your opponent from a safe distance without bleeding health yourself. And that's honestly fantastic. So in today's video, we are going to be playing in the three most accurate tanks in the game. We have the Leopard 1, the Grill 15, and the Object 907. All three of these tanks are sitting at the exact same 0.72 dispersion. We can see that for the 907. If we make our way over to the Leopard one, we can see that here. And the Grill 15 is also the exact same, but I am running Refined Gun on this vehicle because of the fact that I have a pretty nasty loadout and Refined works better. Speaking of the Grill, we're going to start off with this tank. Now, I would say out of the three, the Grill is the least accurate. And that is because of the fact on movement dispersion still needs to be added into the equation. Hitting shots on move is very important. And, well, the grill's not a medium tank. And that means you're not going to be shooting people on the move. But even if you were on the move, the grill has some of the worst values when it comes to driving the tank. So what that means is that if you turn the turret or turn the hull while you're trying to shoot at somebody, the chances of you hitting unless you activate reticle calibration are much lower than if you were in a Leopard 1 or an Object 907. That doesn't mean the grill's bad, but it does mean that it is a very tricky tank to work properly. So, what are we going to do on Canal? Well, first of all, we're going to look at this 240p rock in front of us. Holy bad texture. And then, we have the choice of either covering medium flank or heavy flank. I am going to try and cover the heavy flank as of now. Please don't go up the sill, Stritzvon. I beg. Oh, thank God. Thought he was going to climb up that hill. I was about to mold. But we're all good. We're all good. Saved by the mold. Okay, so we are up top of this hill. This is a great position. First of all, we can shoot tanks if they poke that bush there, which is really nice. Oh, and we also got vehicles right in front of us. Unfortunately, we got a bit bad RNG, and our shell missed. It's even more disappointing, judging that the enemy grill is running away. However, when we put on our accuracy and we shoot at that grill, there you go. Easy shot across the map for 800 damage. And that is why this tank is kind of crazy. It can hit those shots that you really wouldn't expect any other tank to be able to get. Now, the Leopard 1 is holding off the prog. The problem is that you can't hit that player from there. We have the Minnow. We're kind of hoping the Minnow pokes. We have the prog still playing aggressive. Interesting. Okay. Let's see. Oh, there you go. VK72 makes a bad play. Allows me to hit him, and we're not spotted. While the grill does not feature amazing camo values, if you're running camo net on the tank, they are still more than enough to get the job done. And there you go, another easy shell into the enemy minnow without us being spotted at all. So we are up to a pretty solid, probably 1500 damage at this point, which is actually pretty good. We are still just chilling in this back spot here. Nothing can really do anything to us at this point. I'm kind of hoping that the minnow decides to make an aggressive play again. Oh, he gets bonked in the rear. Will he pull up? That is the question. It does not look like that is going to be the case. All right, well, the STB was last spotted up top. However, I don't think the STB is going to be there anymore. We have a full health girl in the back. The boss shots he owns going to clip what appears to be the VK-72. We're going to get a bonk in ourselves, finish off that player, and that was a pretty good start. Well, we can see the STB is in cover, and their team is already done for, so this is a pretty easy situation that we have in front of us. Alright, well, let's move over here, and looks like that grill is actually AFK. Oh, well, if we activate our accuracy, look at that. I would like to see any other tier 10 tank destroyer hit that shot, because I guarantee they won't. That was literally a 1 and probably 100 shot right there. We got the Object 260, we have our Reticle Kalyon, which allows us to get a massive 850 damage, high explosive into his tank. He does hit us back, but let's be honest, it really doesn't make too much of a difference, as this was a pretty solid result. All we're going to do now is push this STB-1, and obviously our vehicle is going to be fine at this. We have enough gun depression over the sides that we can bonk him and get a win. This was a very good battle to showcase the Grill 15's capabilities. 4,000 damage dealt with very little effort really being put in. 
The major thing about the grill is you rely on a good map and a good team. If your team falls apart, sure, you might be able to get a farm out, but yeah, sometimes you just can't do it fast enough to make up for your teammates' inadequacies. Thankfully, this vehicle features a lot of DPM, and as we saw in this game, even though we weren't doing a lot early game, we took advantage of our opponents when we needed to, and we got some absolutely insane shells out. So that's the grill. Now we're going to move on to the next tank, which is the Object 907. Once again, on movement dispersion is the downfall. For some reason, even though the 907 has 0.272 dispersion, for me, it seems to miss more than it should. Maybe it's just a placebo effect, and I don't know, my brain just said, ooh, I missed a shot here and there, and I'm focusing more on the misses than the hits, but I don't know. I just feel like this tank is less accurate than the Leopard 1, so that's why we're putting it in the second place position. However, again, both of these vehicles have the same dispersion value. It's really more dependent on how you like the playstyle. I would say in terms of capabilities, the 907 is better. The 907 has turret armor, it has troll side armor, and it's got a lot of mobility, which the Leopard has, but this tank has better camo values. It's got a lot of other things going for it. While it doesn't have the DPM or gun depression that the Leopard 1 has, one degree difference, it's it's still just a better tank in most situations you'll be playing in. All right, here we go. Up against us, we have a Bosch Chateon 25 ton, an E50M, and a Leopard 1 and a WZ-132. Okay, well, that is four mobile vehicles. Our Bosch Chateon is already making a really bad play going to mid. That's really bad for us because we need oh and our leopard's going to mid as well wow okay well we have four mediums and none of them are going to the medium route guess we're gonna find out what we can do here but uh it's a little bit sussler that's all i'm gonna say we are chilling in this spot right now there you go we have spotted one vehicle in front of us oh one other thing i should mention about the 907 is that it features oh my rat bro it features a bat shot clipping it for 1050 hp how fun oh that missed now we're going to get rushed by the E50M. Alrighty, well, goodbye, I think. Wow, I... I don't know what to say about this. Bye! Wow, okay. 40 percenters unite! Well, we're stuck here for a little bit. Yep, that's about expected. The Leopard shoots me for 765. I bonk him back. We're not dead yet, but we are definitely going to be very, very shortly, if you want my opinion. I don't know what else to say. I'm hoping that my leopard comes out and supports me here, but uh, there you go. He gets shot. Nice. Okay, we have the E50M off to the side. E50 is ignoring me. How are we spotted? I personally don't actually know how we're detected. There you go. We got the clear into the enemy leopard. That's actually kind of huge. We're not dead. Wow. What a cringe game, bro. I make one, in my opinion, good play, and I almost lose my entire tank for it. Yeah, that wasn't such a good play now, was it? 183. No, it wasn't. There you go. Took 600 off his vehicle. Would not be surprised if that leopard does rush me. What do you mean object go? Is he talking about me? There's no way he's telling me to go, right? Oh, 268. I was like, yeah, what? What? Alright, I would not be surprised if that E50M is staring at me. I'm gonna move over here. Come on, show me your haul. Nice, there you go. That's where that accuracy feels amazing. We were able to hit that shell easily when you wouldn't expect, you know, most tanks to. Alright, we get a shell into the E50M once. The E50 is ignoring me and is looking at my teammate. So we get another shell into his tank. He shoots, we have adrenaline on. So we're going to get another shell into his vehicle. And we are actually farming this E50. We're going to bonk him again. We're going to back him the cover before he has the shell on me. And he's dead. Then we finish off the VK90 in the rear. And what was an absolutely awful start has turned out to be a pretty good result. This is why the 907 is just a really solid vehicle in general. And we even get the clear on the WZ. So that's four kills, 1,000 assistance damage, and over 3,000 damage. What a painful game, though. Like, seriously, that was, uh, that was pretty dang painful. We ended up dealing 3,700 did we get an ace for that? No, second class. I was hoping we would get an ace, but it seems like Wargaming has changed the way you get aces. Maybe 1400 is the new ace bar, because normally for a vehicle like this, it's pretty easy. Either way, another really solid game. 
Another great example of accuracy in this tank's capabilities. But you did notice when I was backing up there, we missed the bat chat right out in the open. And that was the kind of weird on move value I was talking about. This tank on the move is not incredibly accurate. It's really good when you sit still, you let it aim in, which we saw when I shot the 183, when I shot the E50. It's great, but you do need to give it some time where the Leopard is just an all round beast. The gun has the most DPM in the game for a medium. In fact, it's one of the highest DPM values out there. I think it's the third highest at tier 10, beaten by the 263 and just the Badger. And that's it. Everything else, the Leopard beats by a lot, I should mention. Uh, the Leopard has incredible mobility, reaching a top speed of like 65, 68, somewhere around there. It's got really, really good everything going for it. All right, well, we're on Canal again. Great job with the matchmaker finding us new games to play on. All right, well, we'll see what we're able to do here. I am up against a 92E1, a Boss Shot on 25 ton, and a Leopard. Okay, well... The thing to know about the Leopard is you should not be playing it aggressive. This is a vehicle that you're basically going to camp in. You're not going to, like, fully camp, but you're not going to play it aggressive either. You're going to play very passive. You're going to wait for your opponents to make mistakes, and you're hopefully going to bleed them for it. Now, all we can see currently is an enemy Leopard 1, who we did miss. I don't like being spotted constantly, but we do have a lot of help over here. And that's obviously pretty good. I just don't know where the rest of their team is. Yep, there you go. That's why you don't make aggressive moves in this tank until you know where the enemy team is. They also probably have a TD there. They might have a TD on the other hill. Yep, look at that. Every single one of their tanks gets spotted right in that position. So what I'm going to do? Well, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna flank and go somewhere else. I'm not wasting my time on a portion of the map that I literally can't do anything to. It's really annoying that the 183 got spotted the moment I moved. Let's see if we can get a shell into the E100. I'm going to go for his track wheel, but he started moving the moment I shot at it. But that's all right. We uh, we can hit him in the track wheel there, locking him down. Nice. We're going to aim it on his track wheel again, locking him down again. This is why the Leopard is kind of ridiculous. We are single-handedly killing a full health tier 10 German by literally locking him in one place. There you go. Another nice shell. I mean, seriously, what is dude gonna do? His game is over, and, uh, oh, well, of course, the last clearing shell misses, but I don't think it matters too much, because, uh, he's still a goner. Then we get a nice tracking shell into the enemy boss, Chatillon, locking him in place and wasting, again, another precious repair kit. So, just like that, we have literally killed a full healthy 100. That's what we basically did, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Then we just push the 92E1, who apparently has never heard of a repair kit. We get hit by a 344 damage heat shell, which would have to be the Leopard. So you're telling me that their Leopard went from being all the way on... <laughs> okay, and he shoots me with heat. What a, what a skill mode player. I don't even know what to say. Imagine, imagine going from one side of the map on medium flank to camping on base A, bruh. Well, we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna take advantage of this player. What are you gonna do, bruh? I wonder if we can hit that 183 from here. No, we can't. I mean, this guy's gonna run, but I literally could care less because he can't run when I'm jumping over the cliff. Yeah, where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. That's about as exciting as your game gets. <laughs> well, there you go. That was a pretty good battle. And I think it was a good example of why the Leopard is incredible. We were able to absolutely farm the E100 to a point where he couldn't do anything. We hit every single track shell, apart from the first one we fired. Not only that, but we were also able to then shoot the Bosch Atione's track wheel. And the only reason we didn't even get more damage out was because of the T92E1 kind of just uh, killing himself. So what we're going to do at this point is ram the 183 and kill him. There you go. That was a pretty solid result for this German beast. I think that all of these tanks are great, and I think that accuracy is one of the most important values to have on any tank you drive in the game. I mean, look at that. 3,800 damage, 500 assisted. Obviously, that's going to be top on the team. Very little effort needed to be exerted for that battle. I love this tank. I think it's fantastic. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.